I understand you were actually the first galaxy implanter in Australia. Well, Ben, it was you versus me, and I just booked the patient maybe 24 hours before you. And uh, but yeah, look, it's been a great lens. The first patient, I was a little bit nervous about about treating. Um, I had a, a chat to her, talked about the the idea of the spiral optic, all of its benefits. And I was very thankful that things went really, really well. That uh, first implant still hurts, but it's okay. I'll, uh, I'll cry myself to sleep, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. Okay, so Galaxy has changed the things I have been doing last year. So I was implanting diffractive wires for 10 to 15% of my patients. Now I am doing that more, but I'm not using diffractive lenses anymore, so I completely switched to um, full range of field lens, but Galaxy, because I hate diffraction concept. I hate losing contrast sensitivity and losing light, sacrificing light to gain some near vision. I'm really excited with this technology. I think it's, it's, it's making a difference for us. We, we've been using different IOLs in, in the last couple of years and results are really, really encouraging in terms of photic phenomena, uh, but most of all of patient satisfaction. Any tips for people that are wanting to get started with it? Because it is a new lens, you know, there will be some teething problems for some people, but any just general tips? In terms of the targeting, I think really close to zero is good. With the uh, Ray-1 EMV, we used to go quite plus, like 0.25 plus. Now they've adjusted the A constant. I think aiming close to zero is, is what I would do. And, and not promising no halos, because I think although you, they get less, they don't get rings, there is still a halo for many patients. Yeah. I found Galaxy very good from a dysphotopsia point of view. Would you put it in someone that does drive a lot at night? Well, I will, and I did. Uh, so. At first, I was a little concerned uh, if I say a zero nighttime dysphotopsia, that will be a great expectation. So I was very cautious about that and saying my patients that there can be some. But even if you ask your patients, you know, like you force them to speak, you ask about the dysphotopsia because most of the time they will say, yeah, yeah, there's, they say no, there is not. Do you have any tips for early Galaxy users? Well, we are targeting the first positive, just to finish slightly positive or emetrope. So sort of like a trifocal? Yeah. So somehow we want to we wanna cover that because the, the lens has such a nice range and we want to facilitate the, the far distance vision from day one. So that's one. Uh, but and, and in general, we, we like under-promising and over-delivering. That's like the, the standard approach when we talk and advice uh, go through the technology but here we are just telling the patient that they are going to use uh, glasses for near but so far we, we, we don't have any patient that is in a, st as a standard procedure using glasses so it's good we are over delivering that is what we have always wanted. Have you put the Galaxy behind any unusual corneas yet? Yeah so uh, post LASIK I've got about eight or nine patients. Um, I found that if they have a really a, a, a fairly reasonably large area of treatment, they do well, and I use the standard approach that we use for post-refractive eyes. Well-centered, large ablation zone, post-LASIK, I think great. Um, I haven't used it in any other context. So I'm up to uh, probably somewhere between 80 and 100 patients now, and just a lot of fantastic features. Continuous range of vision, no like sweet spots, uh, very low halo profile. Probably about a third of my patients have no halos. Two thirds have sort of mild. Haven't had to explant one yet. And um, yeah, I think it's just a really cool step forward, a whole new way of addressing multifocality. So really impressed.